opportunity uh, to be here on this morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Morning by morning, new mercy we see. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise wherever you are. Give God praise on this morning. Thank you for those of you who are tuned in with us on this morning on our social media. For those of you who are here, we give God glory today. We give Him the praise that He has deserved. God is good and He is worthy of our praise. Amen. The Bible says He inhabits the praise of His people. So we pray that God would come into this place and it would and it would go through your camera, your phones, wherever you may or may be, that God's praise may be lifted up. We want to give God the praise He deserves on this morning. Thank God for this day for allowing us to be here. Our praise and worship team now is coming and they're going to help us usher God into this place.
most gracious and wonderful Father, our maker, our provider, our protector. Father, humbly we approach the throne of grace with hearts filled with thanksgiving, Pastor. Father, we praise your holy name this morning. Father, not what you have done for us, not what you're going to do for us, Father, but for who you are. We just want to say thank you, Master. Father, we approach the throne of grace with hearts filled with thanksgiving, Father. Thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his death. We thank you for his burial, but we thank you for his resurrection, Father. Father, we thank you that now he's seated at your right hand, making intercession for us. And Father, we just want to say thank you right now. Father, we praise your holy name, Father. A name above all names, Father. A name where, just at the mention, demons tremble, Father. The name, Father, that provides salvation, sanctification, and glorification. Father, we just pause right now just to say thank you. Father, a name, Father, that provides peace, healing. Father, a name that every need shall bow. Those in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the earth, Father. Father, a name that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning with your big and tip of love. We thank you for letting us see a sunset and a sunrise, Father. We thank you for your creation. Father, we thank you for those that are under the sound of my voice. Those here in the sanctuary, those on Facebook, those on the phone line. Father, we just say thank you. Father, just as we different name, we different need. Father, but we know that you are a provider. The need may be physical, the need may be spiritual, Father. We just ask that you just touch right now. Father, there may be one that's under my voice, Father, that may be going in the storm. One may be in the middle of the storm and one may be coming out. But Father, we know that you hold all things in the palm of your hands. And all things work for your glory and your good. Father, we just pause right now just to say thank you. Father, we love you. We praise your holy name. Father, we just lift up First Baptist Church. We ask that you just continue to bless us individually as well as collectively. Father, touch our ministries, Father. May we continue to grow in numbers, Father, but spiritually and financially. Father, we just ask that you just touch. Touch our youth department, Father. As they strive to just train up as you have them to go, Father, we just ask that you just continue to bless them. Father, we ask that you just be with our deacon board. Continue to give us a servant heart, Father. Father, we ask that you just continue to be with the associate ministers. Touch them, Father. Father, we ask that you just be with our musicians this morning. Our praise and worship team, as they sing praises into your holy name. Father, we need to hear a word from you this morning, Father. So we just ask that you just touch our pastor this morning. Give him a fresh anointing, Father. Father, bless him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Empty him of self, Father, and pour your Holy Spirit in this morning. Father, we need to hear a word from you. Speak through him as you speak to us, Father. And Father, we ask that you just make us not only hearers of your word, but doers of your word. May your light be guidance to our path, Father. We just ask that you just continue to bless us, Father. Father, we love you so much. We ask that you just continue to be with those on our sick list. Father, we ask that you just continue to touch them. Hide them under your wings of love, Father. We just ask that you just be with them, Father. Guide them. Father, we ask that you just be with us, Father, in this time where there's so much uncertainty, so much unrest, Father. We just ask that you just continue to bless us, Father. Guide us. Let us see first your kingdom and your righteousness. Father, let us trust in you with all our hearts and not lean to our own understanding. In all our ways, be with you, Father. Father, we love you so much. We ask that you just touch this morning. Father, when it's yours to call and ours to answer. Father, we pray that you just give us a resting place in your kingdom. Father, we love you. We adore you. We magnify your name. And we pray this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
to me Jesus, you'll lose. 
But if you take Jesus with you, you can win with a slingshot and a rock. I'm just trying to tell somebody that Jesus can make the difference. He can make the difference in your life. He can make the difference in your home. He can make the difference in your ministry. He can make the difference in your church. Jesus can and will make the difference. This man met Jesus. And Jesus made a difference in his life. The Bible says Jesus healed him. And after he was healed, Sister Carla, he picked up his bed and began to walk. Bible declares that he goes into the temple and when he gets in the temple there are some people that were interrogating him asking him who healed him and the man replied it was Jesus that made me whole that Jesus did it that he couldn't give the credit to no one else but Jesus. And I'm talking to some people today that you've been through some stuff in your life and when God brought you out, the only person you can give the credit was Jesus. Do I have a witness? And so this text says a few things to me and then we can go home. Do you want to hear it? God bless you today. Number one, this text says something about the rapidness in the miracle. Verse 9 says this. Verse 9 says, the man was healed. And he was healed immediately. Quicker than one, at once, faster than right now. The man was healed. The man, Sister Hamilton, had been ill for 38 years. But Jesus turned it around in 38 seconds. It teaches us that it don't take Jesus as long to get you out of some stuff. As long as it took you to get into some stuff. It took you a long time for your marriage to get that messy. It took a long time for your money to get that funny. It took a long time for your change to get that strength. It took a long time for your health to get that sick, your emotions to get that depressed. It took a long time for your blood pressure to get that high, your diabetes to get unstable. It took a long time for your cancer to spread. But when Jesus gets involved, it don't take him long to get you out of some stuff, as long as it took you to get in some stuff. That's why I like what the songwriter said. The songwriter said he'll do it suddenly. Am I talking to anybody that can testify that Jesus can do it suddenly? One phone call, one text message, one doctor's visit, one application. You can go to bed sick and wake up well. You can go to bed wet and one minute and have money in your pocket the next minute. One trip to the mailbox, y'all ain't gonna help me preach.
you got to pay for extra shipping. That means the faster you want it, do I have wilderness, the more it's going to cost. But that don't work with Jesus. You ain't got to pay extra shipping for Jesus. Jesus can come up, not on the next day, but on the same day. Can I get a witness? The text said he was healed in me. Do I have a witness? And I know some talking to some people in here this morning need some immediate blessing. Do I have a witness? You need something to happen in your life right now. You, you need the blessing like yesterday. You need it instantly. And the good news of the gospel is that we serve a God that can move right now. Bible says he was healed immediately. There's the rapidness in the blessing. But then secondly, I see the response after the miracle. The Bible says he took up his bed and walked. In the first place, he went was the temple. He had been down for 38 years. But when God blessed him, he went to the temple. Do I have a witness? When he got his blessed, when he got, when he got his healed, when he got his breakthrough, he went to tell the Lord, thank you. What's the first thing you do? when you get your blessing. What is your response after God opened doors for you? Do you run to the mall or do you run to the master? Do, do you run to God or do you run to the cabinet shack? Do you run and party or do you come to prayer service? The problem with most people is that they are holy hustlers. They are pious pimps. And Lord leeches. Preach past on track. They don't come to church. They don't talk to God. They don't spend time with God unless something is wrong. As long as things are good, God can't hear from them. They get 10 cents over welfare and they give one dollar. They get a new boo and they stop serving. Preach past control. Yeah, yeah. They get a new job and they don't have time for God anymore. They are pious pimps, holy hustlers. They are users. Do I have a witness? They, they are spiritual leeches. You know what a leech is. It's a blood sucking parasite. Do I have a witness? And, and how many know that you could be surrounded by some leeches? Oh yeah, you can. You, you probably got some leeches in your family. Don't have a witness. I'm talking about those that suck the joy out of you. Yeah, drain you for your money. Don't have a witness. They, they don't call you and check on you until you want something. Preach, Pastor. I'm, I'm trying. You got some leeches at your job. Don't have a witness. They want, want you to do everything, but as soon as you need them to do something, they can't do it. They, they are leeches. And, and just because you got leeches in your home and leeches on your job, don't you think for a second there ain't no leeches in the church? Can I get a witness? There are some people that do not connect with God until they want something. Do I have a witness? But, but let something go wrong. You, you can't beat them running the church. You, you can't beat them praying. Be them at Sunday school day. Come to church on time. Do I have a witness? And they start asking about what kind of books can they buy? What scriptures do they need to read? They, they are holy hustlers, pious pimps. But as soon as God bless them, you don't see them. That's why I like this man. This man, this man, this man got his blessing. And the first thing he did was run to the temple. Can I get a witness? You know what I discovered? That's why God got to keep some of us broke. Some of us sick and some of us by ourselves. Because God knows as soon as you come up, you're going to act a fool. Oh yeah, he know you know you know yourself. You're going to start speaking to folk. You're going to start being boastful. You're going to start bragging, being all puffed up, self-centered, condescending. Don't get a new car. Can't nobody ride in it. Get new furniture. Can't nobody sit in it. Can I get a witness? God knows how you go at and some of us don't pray unless we're suffering. Some of us don't serve a 
unless we are suffering. Some of us are not humble unless we are hurting. I don't know who I'm talking to, but just know that God got you going through some stuff because He knows He can't trust you. Can I get a witness? Because as soon as you get your breakthrough, as soon as you get your blessing, as soon as He removes your burden, you run out and forget the God that brought you. Maybe God has you in the predicament you're in. Maybe it's because he knows how you gonna act after you get the this. Do I have a witness? Because how many know God knows us more than we know ourselves? Yeah, there is the response after the miracle. There is the rapidness in the miracle. But then thirdly, there is the resistance to the miracle. While he was y'all. In the church, there were some Pharisees, Jews, Sadducees, that were asking him, how was he healed on the Sabbath? The church folk, who should have been happy for him, were tripping because he was healed on the wrong day. Can I throw this in the pot while I'm standing over the dumbbell? Some of your worst critics are Christians. I'm not saying that to you. I'm talking about those in the choir stand, those, those with usher tags on, them. those in the pulpit. Some, some of your worst critics are Christians. The folk that supposed to shout hallelujah are the ones that be hating on you. Can I get a witness? And as long as God is blessing me, it's okay. But when God turn around and start blessing you, it's a problem. I ain't got to say that now. But aren't you glad this, that what God has for you is for you? Do I have a witness? It don't matter how they smile in your face and all the time and talk about you behind your back. And all the time they want to take your place, the backstabbers, backstabbers. Temptation says they smile in your face and still tell lies. Can I get a look at that? And, and, and don't act like you don't know nobody like that because, because somebody just popped up in your spirit just when I started talking about it. Can I get a look at but, but, but they cannot hinder nor hamper what God has for you. If God is for you, it's more than the world against you. I don't care who against you. It can be an enemy. It can be a friend. It can be racist. It can be prejudice, hatred, witchcraft, demons, black folk, white folk. It don't matter. If God got a blessing with your name on it, can't nobody stop it from coming. Don't be surprised. When folks start attacking you, can I get a witness? You see, we, 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 we think that when God bless us, everybody's going to be happy for us. But see, so, some people don't want you to be blessed. Go ahead. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. There, there are some people who thought they were better than you. And, and when you got your blessing, that they don't have nobody else to look down on. Do I have a witness? But here, and when, when people, when God started blessing you, I'm talking about doing things for you that He ain't doing for everybody else, people will stop talking to you. Like, like y'all ain't ever been through nothing. Like you don't have a witness. But, but, but I heard somebody say, when, when, when people stop talking to you, that means God is speaking for you. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Is it a Jesus, man. 
Can I get a little limousine again so you can take it home with you? God already had a purpose in your life before so and so had an opinion. So you let them have their opinion. A lot of people think that, that, that their opinion matters in your life like it's hanging and it got to be approved. But let me tell you something. You don't need nobody's approval. And as long as God has stamped a yes on your life, everything is going to be all right. Because when you please God, it don't matter who you displease. But when you displease God, it don't matter who you please. I, I'm here to tell somebody today to look at yourself. Don't look at the Joneses. Don't look at the Jacksons. But look at yourself. Look at what you have accomplished through God. Look at where you are in God. You ain't got to compare yourself to nobody else. You ain't got to hate on nobody else. Thirdly, it says something about the resistance in the mirror. But lastly, it says something, watch this, it says something about who was responsible for the mirror. Okay. He answers the question to those who are interrogating him. He said, it was Jesus that made you know. Do I have a witness? In other words, Jesus did it. When you read the text, when you read it, you will not discover the man giving any details about the miracle. The only thing he told those Jews was Jesus did. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't give them any itemized details. He, he, didn't, he didn't say, I was at the pool and, and I tried to get in. And then somebody kept stepping before me. Jesus asked, he, he didn't write no dissertation. He, he didn't write no thesis. He didn't, he didn't write no article. He didn't do no essay. He had three words. Sister Wilkins, Jesus did. Can I get a witness? The man didn't even try to explain what happened. He didn't even elaborate on what took place. Because he realized that he didn't know no Negro, no invitation, or no explanation to what God is doing for him in his life. Can I throw this in real quick for free? You don't owe anybody no explanation for what God is doing in your life. You, you let the blessings that God gives you speak for us. His healing alone should have spoke volumes. But the man didn't tell me that um, Jesus did. And you know, brothers and sisters, I really can't um, blame this man. I can't knock the man for not being Transparent. Because there are some blessings that have taken place 
the lonely Jesus.
there's a sweet expression.
this morning I want to give to your church through the tithes and offering through our Givelify. Please check our online page for uh, the status of this coming Wednesday. We're going to wait to see what the tropical data is going to do before we give you anything more definitive. Also, we have a list of supplies on our line that we're asking that you would drop off on Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday, and we may take uh, some supplies to the hurricane victims in Louisiana and Texas. The deadline is October the 3rd, and so you still have a few days to do that. Amen. Continue to pray for Brother Robert Merchant. Lift up Sister Bledsoe, who lost her niece on the other day, and she called and requested our prayers, and there's other, many other people who are desiring our prayers uh, on today. This is the, this is the third Sunday. Okay, next Sunday will be our tribe Sunday for those of you who uh, would uh, have not paid your tribe for the month of September. We'll be accepting our tribe on this third Sunday. You can do it through Givelify. Just make sure you designate a tribe you are you know, you can drop it in the mailbox. So, amen. Amen. We will be giving you an update on uh, the real thing of our church uh, really soon. So continue to please be patient in that regard. Amen. All right. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you. We're glad to have Brother Retired Slash Pop Payne back with us on this, this morning. Glad to have you. Now by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit may rest through and abide in us and for now.